Hi Dixons, I'm Laura Senior, Senior Vice Principal for the Teaching Institute. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel, use the like button and comment below to tell us which episodes have been most useful to you or what you would like to see on the channel next. Today's episode focuses on top tips for leading great larger group lessons. This content is responding to the fact that some teachers across our schools may be finding themselves teaching larger groups for the very first time. Teaching larger group lessons is a distinctive feature across many of our schools, as Lydia Gale explains in her video on larger group teaching. But timetable changes, and particularly with the context of the challenges that COVID presents, some teachers may be finding themselves leading or supporting larger group sessions for the first time or more regularly. I've had the privilege of watching several teachers across different Dixon's academies expertly lead larger group lessons. Often the strategies they employ can seem invisible, but like all great lessons, whether obvious or not, those great teachers sweat the small stuff. Often it's the simple things done well which makes all the difference, particularly when you're leading a session with a large number of students. So here is an overview of the top tips for teaching great larger group lessons. Organisation. Use your usual academy routines and language, entrance routine and seating, tight transition of resources, accessible task setup, organisation. To deliver great lessons, we know the simple and practical things matter. Make sure you know the space. This is important for large group teaching in particular, as you may not be familiar with the space. As a teaching space, it may not be configured as a usual classroom setup. Knowing the configuration of the seating is really important. Is it in tables or rows? And if in tables, how many students are seated per table? All of this information impacts on the decisions you make about managing your entrance and exit routines and how to manage the movement and distribution of materials and resources in this space, which becomes even more important to complete as efficiently as you can when you have more students in the room. Knowing the space also means you can decide where you are best to welcome students, deliver content and monitor student behaviour. In addition, like any classroom, you need to know about the IT equipment in the room, from IT screens if you want to use PowerPoints, visualisers if you want to live model, which can be a great tool for larger group lessons, and microphones to support voice projection, which many of our academies use when delivering to larger groups. Then there is making sure you have the right resources for the session, that you have enough lined paper or booklets to hand or having spare equipment and resources if you think this is something that will be needed. If you have other staff in the room with you, they need to understand their role in the lesson, particularly at key points. This is vital for you to be able to lead the session and know that you have staff in the room that are actively monitoring or supporting the entrance and exit routines. They should know where they need to stand and what their role is. Great organisation makes for a confident delivery. Use your usual academy routines and academy language. I would say that out of all the tips, this is the one which I think underpins a great larger group session. Your academy routines are there for a reason and they also provide reassurance to students about what is expected reassurance that even if the larger group setting offers a slightly different experience that the usual culture of high expectations still very much exists. So whether you have a mantra at the start of a session, a do now task, tracking, learning modes, two claps after three, don't suddenly forget about the routines or language otherwise it signals lower expectations for the session. If you haven't already done so, do take a look at our videos on routines like exit routines, hands up for silence or turn and talk. One way that ensures a positive start to any large group lesson is a calm start. Managing more students means you need to have thought through with precision how you will manage the flow of students into the space. How will students enter? Will you seat them in groups of six or will you ask them to enter a row at a time? Will you ask them to fill up from the back of the room or will they simply go to their designated seated plank seat? Managing the flow of students into a larger space with confidence and precision allows for a confident calm start. 
I would also suggest front-loading your instructions so that students know exactly what to do once they've sat down. So thank you for entering in your lines. Please take your seat, then read the instructions on the board and complete steps one to four. Then, where possible, if you have a screen, your verbal instructions can be reinforced on the screen so that students know what to do now and next. The entrance routine is also a great opportunity to demonstrate positive framing, to set a positive tone. This means narrating what you expect to see. So thank you for entering and filling up from the back. Great to see you completing the four steps on the board. This will give a positive nudge to students who may have forgotten to complete steps one to four. Tight transitions. Teaching larger groups means managing more resources. As mentioned earlier, knowing your space and how it is set up means you can decide how best to distribute of moved materials in that space so that we have tight transitions and maximise learning time. At some of our academies, we use the instruction one sheet, one pass. When students distribute materials down a row, students know to take the pile of sheets which the teacher leaves at the end of the row and pass the rest of the pile on. This is done efficiently and it's practice routine so that they know what to do. Knowing what you're going to do in advance means that you can be in control which supports that positive professional presence. You can then do a check and ask students to raise a hand or to popcorn, which in our academies where there's a no hands up rule means they stand up if they don't have resource, so that you can rectify this before you proceed. Designing and setting up accessible and clear tasks supports settled and purposeful larger group lessons. This is particularly important when you have a greater number of students with different abilities or whether you have different groups of students working on different tasks all in one space. Clarity and accessibility of task is vital in any task setup, particularly to support the behaviour management of the session. It is important the instructions for the task that you give answer the following questions, otherwise you'll be bombarded with questions. What must students do? Why is it important? What's the purpose of the task? What is the success criteria? How are you asking them to complete the task, individually or in pairs? How long they've got to complete the task? What do they do when they finish? And what do they do if they're stuck? I often find having the instructions repeated on the handout or screen supports the creating clarity. Providing worked examples, such as using the I do, we do, you do approach, which John Gilbert explores in his video, is a great strategy for structuring a larger group session to provide scaffolds and models so that students feel supported and you remove any barriers to learning to allow for independent practice. Before you set students off, check they understand what they're doing. This could be done by asking students if they have any questions or asking them to popcorn or raise their hand using the prism or asking students to repeat back the instructions to you. Then make sure you plant yourself somewhere where students can see you and you can see them so that you can be seen looking. That's using radar from Teach Like a Champion, so that students know that you expect your instructions to be followed and you are actively looking to see that it is. I hope you've found these tips useful. Please comment, perhaps if you have another top tip or you want to offer an explanation of something in more depth and a reminder to subscribe to the channel.